Hey, man. Hey. Nice to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Good. So are you living in Australia now? Yeah, I live here. Isn't that wild? S- since when? Uh, in late April, my fiance and I moved here. She's Australian. And we're waiting for my visa to so we can get married so I can officially live here. Um, okay. But yeah, otherwise, until then, uh, I'm just a visitor, really, but a living visitor. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Congratulations, by the way, on, right. on the engagement. I don't yeah. know uh, how long you've been engaged, but yeah, like three years. Oh, my years. God. Never mind. You know what? Forget it. Yeah. I take it back. Screw you. I take it back. <clears throat> do I need yeah. to do video on this or are you? Getting no, and video? I'm not going to and I'm not recording video. It records the audio on its own. So okay. you don't need to worry about that either. Like this whole setup should should just keep everything recorded. So cool. um, also, all I'm going to say is like, oh, go ahead. what's that? I was going to ask if any hurricanes hit you. Uh, we got really lucky. We 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 did lose power for a little while. I got some local friends who still don't have power since last week, but uh, oh, man. it kind of went north of us. So okay. everything north of us was like flattened, but Halifax yeah. is good. So good. yeah. All right. What um, so what so what this is really is I've been like doing some videos about like the old magazine days. Um, issue by issue. And so I've done a couple of these already. And it was like, I was reading your bio in this issue where you're talking about, cause you did Donkey Kong country 64 where you were talking about being out in Washington. So that's why I reached out and asked, like, did you actually go to Washington to do this? And then it's like, you know what? We have the technology now to have phone calls from halfway around the world and record the audio. So why not? It's not <laughs> like the old days. It. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, 20 years ago, I would have flown to Australia to talk to you. But yeah, this is much easier. It's a shorter, (laughs) shorter situation. So generally, you just want like, like, you'll talk to me about Donkey Kong. I also did the uh, the WWF thing. WWF. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I mean, like, we we don't have to it doesn't have to be formal. Like, honestly, just sort of let's just chat. You know, I mean, I have a couple questions, but it's not like a formal interview. We know each other, you know, so. I saw my um, uh, bio and I was like, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all funny. Yeah. And just opening this magazine and flipping through it was just pretty hilarious in general. So, yeah. This was early days. I, it was. I mean, this was my, I think this was the first month I actually lived there. Oh, wow. Like, That's it was because I was working from Nova Scotia up until that point. So. Right. That's what I wondered. I was like, did he move? I didn't read your bio fully. Did did we should this be part of it? Or I don't know if you want to. Well, sure. I, I don't care. I mean, stuff. if there's anything. Yeah. yeah, I'm recording now. So if there's anything that's yeah. worth using, I'm going to use. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah the, it was interesting because I was like, oh, that must have been when you were in Canada. But I guess you had moved. And then like John Riccardi was still EIC then. So it's like mm-hmm. and I was only an assistant <laughs> editor. So. Yeah, it's just fascinating. Um, just to, just yeah, to like be I, like, I don't even remember. This is in 2000. Like what happened 22 years ago? It's madness. This. Yeah. This is what happened 22 years ago. Like did I flip through and was like, oh, what is the, what are these endless pages? And they were all <laughs> cheat codes. And I was like, yeah. holy crap, that happened. Like we did that. That was a thing. And then I remember, I think I had to read those. And like somebody had to. Yeah, I think it was me. And I'm just like, my I don't want to say I have no journalistic integrity, but my attention to that level of detail, I think I did a good job, but I'm like, that has gone away. Like I I would I would just skim. I would look to make sure like it was a B button and not a you know X button or whatever. Vaguely. But I would not do a good job at that now. I have uh, my career has taken to me where I would refuse to do that. Well, I wouldn't refuse to do it, you know, pay me for. Yeah, (laughs) that's you know what? That's what I that's my recollection. Like when I'm looking at these old magazines as well is kind of like. I I remember that kid. But I'm not I'm I'm clearly not that kid anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's just just little phrases here or there where you read it it's like and and also yeah having grown as an editor from because this was right at the the very beginning of my career too where it's just like boy i would have not let this kid write that (laughs) 
Yeah, it was interesting right. to me too. Like some of my, because I wrote the WWF. I think it was WWF in there. I might be yep. WWE. I might, I might be way behind the times. But I was, I was trying to, you know, speak to the truth of the magazine. But, um, but yeah, WWF and Donkey Kong sixty four. And I think there's like little uh, tags on like, you know, we just wrote little editorial bits about why we mm-hmm. were doing it or whatever. And I, I think they kind of finished with the same flourish <laughs> like kind of the exact oh. almost like i had just copied and pasted i might have changed the words i didn't check but it was like oh this this is a, i've said the same thing twice so i just love that <laughs> i was like that's that's writing yeah that's yeah that's professional <laughs> that's why we were paid for what we were doing yeah, exactly <laughs> god do you remember how much you were getting paid back then uh you know what i was about? trying i feel like it no is that's weird, fine let's do it i mean we're not under nda anymore oh, yeah. um <laughs> Like were we, we ever? Were. <laughs> <laughs> we were. No, I mean, I think I was making. I want to say like thirty something. Yeah, like I think it was like thirty. It wasn't a lot. It wasn't a yeah. lot. Yeah. And, no. and I'm like, and I don't think I negotiated. I think I was just like, okay, whatever, <laughs> just hire me. Oh yeah. So I can do well, it. I mean, I was I was coming from a minimum wage job in Halifax, like a dead end nowhere. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't think I was even think I was employed when I got this job. Oh, wow. I think I was living, I'd moved back home. Yeah. That's so, funny. yeah. This is yeah. a big time. So, and was this, we were living in Oak Park, Illinois, or we were working in Oak Park, Illinois? We were working in Oak Brook, Oak Brook Illinois. That's what it was. Yeah. Just down from Hamburg University. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Man, what a life. I remember one time uh, during this period where there was a snowstorm so bad that I went out in my car. I like, I kept clicking the thing and it wouldn't work and my key wouldn't fit. And I was like, it's iced over, it's madness. And then I realized it was just somebody else's car that uh, <laughs> was snow covered. And I was like, oh, right, that's uh, that's hilarious and dumb. Anyway, I like that. You were living in town, right? You were living in Chicago. I in, was um, in Wicker Park. Which Wicker is, Park, that's yeah, it. Which is like now yeah. just like an excessively cool area, which at the time was also cool, but it was like. It was pretty cool then. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, high fidelity uh, record shop was right around the that's, corner for me. Yes, yeah. that's what I was thinking. It's like that's why I was asking because I remember watching High Fidelity, yeah. and it's like, oh, I've been not to that record shop, but like yeah. I've been there. I've been in that neighborhood, like yeah. hanging out oh, with wow. Todd. That's cool. Yeah, and then uh, the uh, what else? Oh, Ali, the the Will Smith hit people in the face movie, not the real one, but the fake one. Um, he, uh, the rooftop he was, he danced on was over there. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I was just oh, back really? in Chicago, uh, to do a literary death match a couple of weeks ago. And I, I have felt surprisingly nostalgic, just generally like, wow, this is like a very important time in my life. Just l- the time I lived here. Um, uh, cause I right. lived there when I was 20 and then I left to move to San Francisco. Um, yep. and yeah, wild after nine 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nine 11 happened while we were, while we were in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, that was when my my mom called that day and was crying. Is like, I want you to move home right now. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I, was like, I, I remember I, walking. I get it. Yeah, this is gold for the podcast. It has yeah, no the magazine, but I remember walking down out of my brownstone, and we lived on Wicker Park itself. And I remember walking out and looking up at the sky, looking to see if there was going to be an airplane flying at me or something, and then being like, mm-hmm. "Nope, I'm good." And I went back in and uh, yep. decided not to go into the office, which nobody cared. Everybody was like, "Yeah." It's fucking crazy. That was a weird day, man. It's that a was weird a weird day. day. Let's yeah. let's keep it upbeat. Let's move it on to less. Yeah. Minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I will ask you a couple of uh, pointed questions here. So, um, like, look, looking at your bio, actually, like I said, the thing that sort of sort of led me to reach out was because I remember back in the day, and I don't know how much experience you had with this because once you moved off XG, you were on OPM, so you didn't really have to deal with Nintendo after that. Right. But Nintendo was really prickly about you know, like the games, they didn't send out their games, right? You either went to Redmond to play them or they sent like one of their, their goons with like lock boxes and everything like that. I shouldn't say goons. They were nice people, but you know, and we had to like be in the room with them to play them and all that sort of thing. Anyway, you mentioned in your bio that you were in Redmond. So did you go to Redmond to do this to do this uh, guide or did you, or did you do like some of the, cause I know EGM had a cover story on Donkey Kong 64, like the same month. Like, were you involved in that then? Well, okay. So let me back up just to the preview. Cause there was a preview of the game that they did um, in Seattle. There's a preview event and I had gone 
to that. And first of all, I was not the Nintendo guy, so I don't understand why I was the Donkey Kong guy. It was very funny right. to me. And I was like, well, it's free travel. And at that time, literally, I remember, this is so hilarious that we talk about salary, because I remember going on junkets was the way for me to like eat well and like, you know, those three or four days on a trip could make the difference that like paying rent or whatever. You know, it's just like, you just got to, you got to experience life as you hoped. Um, Cause it was also an era where, th- where that was more of a thing, like before mm-hmm. junket stuff, whatever. And um, so it started at, uh, they took us to a baseball game, a Seattle Mariners, Ichiro. I saw uh, Ken Griffey Jr. hit his 394th career home run, I believe it was. And cool. uh, it was very cool. But we were in a we were in Nintendo's box, and I, yeah, I mean, if you've ever seen a picture of me, or you can look at me now, I'm not, uh, I don't look like I can hold my liquor, right? And that <laughs> night, I drank seven seven martinis in that box, or like like five there, and then two somewhere else, like along the way, and I ended up uh, going to, and I'm I'm not a strip club guy, but there's this place where we went into me and this guy who I'm now forget who he is. Um, but we went into this thing and it, like we I got four quarters. <laughs> That's what I was going to afford because there's like a thing where you put in a quarter and a window would go up. Right. And I go into this. Uh, and this is when I was like very much into like Kevin Smith's uh, clerks and stuff and just the jerk boost and stuff and whatever. Jizz mops. It, it was this era where I was thinking this, but I'm now in one of these. I put a quarter in. I'm so drunk. I can barely stand up. And I put a quarter in and it goes like this. It goes, and I see through a very cloudy window, like women hang out. It was very unsettling. I don't even know what I saw and I don't want to remember. And then like, that's how much a quarter gave me. And I was just so (laughs) amused by that. And then just got out of there. And it was so fantastic. I was like, that was the best quarter I've ever spent for seven (laughs) seconds. And then, uh, yeah. And then the next day I went to go do the preview event. And there were a lot of journalists there because this was a very big deal. Like Nintendo was yeah, doing Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong 64. And my, I, I was so ill from the alcohol I'd, I'd consumed. I kept going up and taking naps for like 45 minutes at a time. Of course, I never told anybody this, but it didn't seem like, of course, I felt horrible and guilty about it, but it didn't seem like anybody cared if I was there or not necessarily. Like if I wouldn't have shown, it would have been bad, but I just kept right. coming back, drinking water and then being like, I really, and it was so loud. It was the loudest thing I've ever experienced. And it was, you know, everybody's playing at full volume. And then I just, you know, it was before headphones really as a, as a necessity in life. And I just kept going back and forth. And then at the, like 5 PM when they closed it up, they're like, we're sorry, we're closing up early. And I was like, I've never been happier for anything in my life. And then uh, that was it. So that was, that preface prefaced it. Um, and I guess from that event, they're like, you do the strategy guide, you played the game. I'm like, oh, I played the game. All right. It's probably one of those deals <laughs> where I had to keep lying to like, to, to protect myself. And so the idea that I went up to, I guess, Redmond, I have no memory of this. That was my favorite part of you asking me to do this. I'm like, I have no oh memory God. of doing this. But then when it said that Carrie Wise, the layout Masta, M-A-S-T-A-H, with a trademark, which also is funny because your bio has a Masta with an H, but no trademark. This is the kind of writing we were capable of. This is, uh, that, and, then, and that was... That was a great example of what I was talking about, where yeah. it's like, I'm reading what this kid wrote 20 years ago, yeah. and I wouldn't have let that happen, right? But so we were all clearly using the same vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Wait, yeah. Is it, was it your bio? Because I remember not reading your bio. So now I'm like, was it? it doesn't <laughs> yeah, matter. Yeah, it's my You're bio. Yeah, Whirly Ball Master. Um, what, Whirly, so I did read your bio. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember the Whirly Ball. That was wild. Oh, yeah. Um, I loved Whirly Ball. So good. Um, so then, uh, so yeah, I don't remember, but then reading Carrie Wise was there and I was like, oh wow, did I go up? So I feel like I went up for like two weeks and played this game, but that sounds, it sounds so crazy, but I don't know. It sounds Nintendo. That's what I'm saying. I mean, and that we, we had that happening on different games because I remember this is much later on, but like, um, when we were reviewing Metal Gear Solid 2. I don't know if you did that for OPM, but I know like, I think Crispin and Mark and maybe John Dudlack all went for EGM and they went out to California for two weeks or a week or something like that and played through, right? So it wasn't unheard of and Nintendo was weird like that. So that's why I was curious. Yeah. But did you... It says I worry, you know, I, uh, I went for a month, so most of the month. I... 
I can't imagine I went for more than a week. Like, how is that sane? But at the most, two weeks. Because also, like, you know, these games just take time to play. Yeah, sorry. I know mm-hmm. I'm blowing up this interview by not remembering any of this. Oh, that's okay. kind of my favorite part. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I, I just have no recollection of this happening. And now, like, something is filtering and brewing. And I'm like, sorry. So I'm sort of grabbing and being like, I get like the fact that Carrie was there, maybe we had to go and do it um, together. And that sort of makes me believe something happened, but I don't know. It's very strange. And then flipping through the pages, I'm just like, how on earth are, are these pages helpful to anyone who needs to find <laughs> golden bananas? Like, I guess it helps, but it's like, take, take a, it's almost like you're getting directions from, <laughs> from just some old person on the corner of, a very rural area just take a left at the at the you know (laughs) sign with a monkey on it and then go down a hill maybe one or two blocks i mean we don't have blocks here i don't know it was just i i thought i could come up with something better but it is 9 a.m and i'm I'm done um (laughs) but yeah it's like just reading that is hilarious world one jungle japes what what the hell was happening Oh, I know, right? Well, you know, that's the other thing that's been kind of interesting about reading this because actually I think it, to back up, I think it's interesting that you were taking like uh breaks during the um during the junket and he said nobody cared and like that kind of working at an expert gamer that's kind of how it felt. Like we were the we were like the little sibling to like, oh, it's EGM and it's official PlayStation magazine and oh yeah, expert gamer comes out of there too right yeah, like yeah. we're we were the nobodies for, so I, I i'm not surprised you got away with it although i really like part of me is is in my mind i'm like oh john ricardi is listening to this right now and he's like son of a bitch i can't believe i sent him out there and he didn't even really go to the junket like well, he went to a peep show he went to right. a peep show for a 25 cents <laughs> like for me I, i'm like well, also, I'm thinking about the fact that if I went to the preview, that would have been for EGM or for, yeah, it would have been for EGM. That's right? why I was curious. Yeah. Yeah. So because like, they did a cover story. So, oh, man. So I must have, I mean, look, my imagination and my ability to write has got me through the last 47, <laughs> I, let's say 37 years. Um, but it's like, <laughs> I guess I was just like, I got what I need. <laughs> Like I was just playing to get what I need instead of, cause that's another thing that I learned from playing uh, games at expert gamer. Sometimes you would need to play a game 25 hours, but you would play at 40 cause you're also just sitting at a desk fucking around playing a video game. You know, like right. you could <laughs> sometimes you're just like, well, this is fun. What, what else am I going to be doing? Um, like I have to write it. You know, that was always an interesting thing is when you had to be like, okay, I got to quit playing and get this work done. There's a magazine to write. Um, I don't know if I ever figured that out because I got to move over to, uh, to official PlayStation magazine. But. Yeah, you and I were on XG around the same amount of time. I mean, you started a few issues before me, um, but we we both moved off at the same time because I went to EGM, you went to OPM. Um, so, yeah. And one of the other things you mentioned in your bio, I'm assuming this didn't actually happen where you were saying you were trying to talk. I think you were trying to talk Carrie into going to Vancouver, which for anyone who to see because the blues were playing the Canucks, I assume. And for anyone who knows you knows that's not a far fetched thing at all. Like that's at absolutely all. something you would do. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, but I kind of think at least they got a mention, you know, like at least I was like, Hey, Carrie, is this crazy? And I'm sure Carrie was like, no, I'm not. Yeah. That. But I was like, <laughs> okay. And then it might've just became something because of the way he was, I might've just kept asking him for fun, but uh, yeah, it's just hilarious. Um, it's, it's yeah. like, and, and you were saying how you don't know how you became the Nintendo guy. And, and I've sort of thought that too, because like I've looked at a couple of these and since, since I've started looking at like the issues that I started in, you were covering, I think the first, the first strategy you did when I had started working there was Pokemon yellow, which by the way, and, okay. So let me say this, that I saw our resident pokey freak and I told my fiance, I was like, that's the dumbest. I have never played Pokemon in my life before Pokemon right? Go, which I play to this day, which annoys the crap out of me that I even bought it. But I was like, I do you I played Pokemon Yellow? That was they tasked me with that. No like that's hilarious. That that was the nature yeah. of this magazine, which was just like, well, we have to cover certain games and we're all gonna get two. And the people <laughs> And Jim Missouri are... can't do them all. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> so funny. By the way, real quick, are these people all alive? Like John Ricardo. Andy Barron, unfortunately. Andy Barron passed away a couple years ago. That's what I thought. I thought I heard something about yeah. that. He yeah. was great because every time you asked him something, 
he was like, I mean, now looking back at it, he, well, he started every sentence with, well, actually, do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I remember. He was like this, he was just like a dude who would try to engage. I think he'd learn pretty quick with me, but he would try yeah. to engage on like, uh, was it missed cards or some? I don't know what the fuck card. Uh, for me, it was um, uh, laser tag. Laser tag. He was a big oh laser tag God. freak. Man, what yeah. a legend! Yeah. yeah, he was a character yeah. and a half. That's sad that he he's passed. He was. Yeah, I, I, Andy was. He was. Um, he was an interesting dude for sure. He was an acquired taste. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but you're right. Like you just described that perfectly because I remember the very first time I was there because before I moved there. They brought me in for like a couple weeks to work on a Final Fantasy guide, and it was it was a part of anthology. And I was working on one game, and Andy was working on the other. So we weren't really working together, but you know, Andy was I think because he always got there first every morning. So like he was the first one to really ever try to engage with me from the expert gamer staff, and he was just so awkward. So um, awkward. But like he, yeah, he tried to he tried to. Uh, relate to me via laser tag which i don't play laser tag at all but he was huge into laser tag and like and he would play international teams oh man so his big thing was like oh yeah canadians man the canadian team is tough and laser tags like yeah Uh, we're known for that so you know it's, (laughs) it's like yeah he's acting like it's uh like Olympic hockey, so, you know, that you're known yeah. for this. The other thing he would always, he would do this thing where he would stand in a funny way and talk about how you have to evade by crossing your arm over your body. And yep. Like Cincinnati you. style. Cincinnati style. Man, I'm so glad <laughs> this kind of conversation. And what, what about Jim Missouri? Cause he's still writing. Uh, I uh, have not interacted with Jim since we moved to San Francisco. Um, I know he was doing guides for a while um like 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 brady games yeah Yeah. he was like which doesn't surprise me he was hardcore yeah he was um but yeah i haven't talked to him in years that's funny and he was doing twisted twisted metaphor that's bold in his bio yeah it's a it's interesting uh and john riccardi is he living in japan sorry i know yeah he runs eight four it's a translation translation uh group they translate games to i think they translate some english games back to japanese i think they've done it a couple times but um he the, his company translates japanese games to english that's amazing um yeah it's pretty and they've got a pretty popular podcast too mark mcdonald was working there for the longest time as well although he's gone now I've, he works um oh it's terrible i can't remember the name of the company they did tetris effect oh wow the, yeah, the company nice. that he works for now so that's cool um, yeah all right, that's fine. I'm sorry, I'm just going down. No, this uh, is great. History road. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Talking about getting back to the to Donkey Kong. Yeah, that's what I want. Actually, no. You know what? Now that I'm saying that, I want to finish my thought. So because because we were, we started that tangent talking about Pokemon, then the other game you covered was Suikoden Two, which is like a hardcore oh Japanese role playing game. So funny that and I had to find 107 characters. Isn't that how that yeah. works? That yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> I, by the end of that, I loved it. And it was so funny because going in, I was like, why would in anybody's right mind, it was the worst fit. Like Donkey yeah. Kong and WWF, WWE, that makes sense for me. You know, those are both within a wheelhouse, um, you know, because Donkey Kong's kind of a pop game, whatever. Suikoden 2, man. What? A, how many up Suikoden's are they up to? I didn't even know how to pronounce uh, it. I think they got to four or five. God, burn it down. You know, I'll yep. never play. It. I did think though. I was like, I liked it so much. I'll, I'll play the future. Actually, no. you know what? They just announced remakes of the first and second game. I mean, so I should I'm, gift that to you and you can use your guide to get through so we can into it. Yeah. It sounds like expert <laughs> gamers coming back based on that or that's going to need to. <laughs> By the way, the other thing I want to say about reading through this guide and flipping through the pages is like the, like I play iPad games and stuff or when I'm playing games, I get stuck and I'll just be like, okay, I'm just going to look at this level. And I go watch a video of somebody doing it, right? Mm-hmm. The idea that you had to, like, the evolution is so extraordinary. That's like, here, I'm going to directly show you versus like, I'm going to tell you at a loud bar. <laughs> it's like yep. what this version is. And that it helped. And people got through these games. I mean, they were much simpler at that time, I guess, maybe. But it's absolutely absurd. I, yeah. Yeah, that's been that's been my experience looking at this, too, because like we all had different page counts that we had to write to and like, you know, being able to fill like put a a 50 hour game into like five pages, you know, it's like how in the world do you even begin to organize how you're going to do this? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, so uh, one question that I did have for you too, because I'm curious um, if you might, you might not even remember this, the maps that are in this. Yeah. Do you have any, did Nintendo supply those? Did you and Carrie make those? My, um, immediately when I saw them, I thought that Nintendo supplied them. And then now that we've been talking, I think that might've been part of why Carrie was there to like draw them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, like, it's so weird. They seem both like Nintendo might have supplied them, and then they also seem like some dude just put them together on a 2000 laptop, you know? <laughs> right. Like, well, that's why I thought that it might have been that Carrie put them together, because they don't they don't look like the fidelity is not the same as you would expect from, like, Nintendo right. having official maps yeah, yeah. and, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and like I'm looking at because when I went through and I was looking at the Tomb Raider strategy uh-huh. that I did with um, Tim Davis. Uh, which actually is that this. Yeah, that's this issue with Tim Davis. Um, the maps that we have in there were hand drawn. I drew those as I played like wow. grid on grid paper, grid by grid. And then Tim took them and made them look hand drawn. And then we got. Oh man. Which I, I regret this now to a point, but it's like I remember we decided, okay, we want these to look like something that Lara Croft drew herself. And so Tim's like, okay, well, I'm gonna put like a crumpled paper texture on it, which right. he did. And then it's like we're gonna handwrite like all the points of interest. Well, it'll be in, in, in cursive, right? And I was like, Well, my handwriting sucks. Right. No one's gonna be able to read that. We want it and, and as sexist as this is gonna sound, we want it to look girly. Right. So we went to Jennifer Whitehead. And she, all the handwriting on those maps is Jennifer Whitehead handwriting all the points of interest. But that's also why the dots for the exclamation points and over the eyes are all hearts. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which absolutely does not fit the character at not all. Not at all. That's so we, funny. We being 20, young 20-something year old men decided oh, that's how you make this girly. Yeah. I would love to erase any interaction I had with a woman in the workplace uh, <laughs> at that time. Like... God, yeah, man, what a the I'm looking at it and that's so funny. And these, ma- yeah, I have to think based on this, it does reason that that he had to yeah. draw these maps, which means I had to like play through it over and over. So it might yeah. have been that we were there for the better part of our lives. Like, I'm just trying to remember like where we ate or like what I did at night, and I'm just like that. I've just erased it. I've I don't know. I had for this visa to. Um, to Australia, I had to put down every international trip I've taken and in oh, the wow. last 10 years, and it was 280 or 225 trips. So like that has been say. replaced. Touring for literary deathmatch has definitely broken my brain. So I'm like, oh, um, but that's <laughs> hilarious about these maps. I just love the idea that I had to keep playing and he was just like, go left. I haven't drawn that. <laughs> so I'm looking at one of them. It's like there's a there's like a room a chunky's blueprint is in there and there's like a room with little like looks like that uh i can't remember the name of the game not excalibur but like an atari 2600 game um and it's yeah good i mean carrie good on you good on you i just realized i think i just said jennifer whitehead who's a friend of mine it's jennifer whitesides Whitesides. who was doing the yeah the uh she was a copy editor um so what about like the WrestleMania 2000, it yeah. is WWF, by the way. It was yeah. still WWF at the time. Um, first of all, I turned this page and, oh, my God, The Rock is a baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. Like that was the weirdest thing I took away. <laughs> it's my first yeah. thing away. So no, no big tattoos. Nothing. Yeah. But like this is pretty straightforward. Like it's a move list. Like uh, I assume that a lot of this information probably came directly from THQ, I think, is who published this. Yeah. Part of yeah. me is like, I mean, now all this stuff is you can go to a pause menu or it'll just show up on the screen. But I, I wondered is like, did they not have this stuff or was it just that you'd have to pause to make sure? So it would be nice if you're playing with, and I quote Mr. Ass that you have <laughs> just all the moves there. So it's like, Oh, now I can just look at, I just glance over and then I can keep doing those. Like that makes sense to me, but it's just funny to see it in this layout. Cause it's just like every wrestler has a little half, page yeah or you know fifth of a page column um half page by a fifth of a page and it's just like there's so many people and it's just like that was just me going through and making sure that they did the thing that they did 
Like what a yeah. absurd use of my time. But I would imagine, yeah, THQ is probably like, here's the move list. Well, um, I mean, and it would make sense when you think about it, the fact that you were turning this and Donkey Kong around in a month. Yeah. And if you spent two to three weeks of the month in Redmond, yeah. then it would be quick. Although I have to say, I want to call out, this is, the intro is so 20-something Todd. Yeah, I did read I that. I have to say. like, there is yeah. like a little spark in life in the writing that I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, I used to be like a freewheeling goofball. <laughs> and now I'm like, no, I'm talented. So I have to like get my fiction right and write screenplays better. Um, but there I was just like, yeah, dork it around, goof it off. So there, it is really funny to read that element of it and be like, oh, yeah. there's." I just like the I like the phrase rehearsed and exciting, scintillating and scripted pro wrestling has stolen the affections of almost every age group like that is that i having worked with everyone if you just handed me that sentence and said who wrote that i would even i wouldn't even have to think about it i just say so funny this kind of writing is what got me a job at official playstation magazine like that guy's got it that guy's got yeah exactly it. that kid's got moxie yeah I, that's get him that's, over here all i had was moxie um but yeah it's it is interesting just to think about like that kind of right, like the offensive tactics, you know, always start mm-hmm. out with a couple of slaps to the gourd. <laughs> it's just like all I did is <laughs> change face the gourd. Um, and just, it's just funny how dumb we are. And how, I, yeah. I feel like though, what I was surprised about, so this must have been a later date, is that there's no mention of Elephant Sack here. Do you remember uh, Elephant Sack? I do remember Elephant Sack. And I don't, yeah, this must have. That must have been a later wrestling game. Man. I think it was an N64 game, actually. I think you ended up being the wrestling guy, so... I was the wrestling guy. <laughs> Wait, now I'm... Because you Elephant famously Sack was, a wrestling fan. Tell me what fan. Elephant Sack was. Elephant Sack was For the uh, a created wrestler that... I love that we're seriously talking about a character named Elephant Sack, oh, by the way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it was a creative that. wrestler, and he, I believe he... I don't know if it happened... I think it was while you were still at XG. I just remember him leaking into the pages of EGM at some point too. Oh, right. <laughs> Between you and like Sean Smith, because I think he had a created wrestler that was equally as ridiculous. I feel and like was I did I create Elephant Sack? That sounds like I want to say Boyer. you did. Really? Oh man. Okay, uh, maybe. So now I'm, maybe. Because like, remember Kristen, I, I don't know if you will remember this story, but um oh fuck, I don't want to mess it up. There's a... Uh, God damn it. Okay, so I'm just going to tell the story without the punchline in a sense or the <laughs> the, the setup. But um, they, uh, Chris and Boyer and Sean Smith were complaining about how there was no, uh, oh, fuck, this is such an important part of the story, but I can't remember the word out, off the top of my head. COVID stuff. We tell stories like old men now. I know, right? But uh, Hang on, I don't remember. Okay, so they basically were like, hey, they called... Um, there was a mode where you could set up the letters throughout the level, right? So it yes, usually yes, I know right? exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. A- and yep. they said this crazy word that I turd eat, turd eat. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. This story. Was- no, no. Okay. So they uh, had uh, figured out a way to put the word turd eat, and you had to like get it on one line, right? And they yeah. called the PR people when the new game came out, and they were like, "Hey, Rob, the pickle." They said, yep, hey, man, uh, what's going on? There's no turd eat mode in this new game. And he's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Like, hold on, bro. If I'll call. So he called THQ or I uh, don't no, uh, never stopped. It was like, hey, man, they're asking about the turd eat mode and how it's in there, which is funny. That tells you like what never Soft was doing at the time. And then yeah. they called. He's like, they don't know what you're talking about. He's like, oh, yeah, we we're just fucking around. We just yeah. So, yeah, it was a Tony Hawk game and it was horse. Horror. Right. Like the, it's based on the game, which it's funny that you're telling that story because I vividly remember that only because I was so naive at the time that I thought it was a real thing, too. It's like turd eat. What's turd eat mode? And then f- somebody's finally like it's horse. Like they just they were allowed to rename it. Right. And they decided that turd eat was the <laughs> so was good. the series of letters you had to I put love together. <laughs> turd eat's a real great game. I play it all the time <laughs> and can't remember the name of it. Man. It is like funny that age has come for us because the fact that it took me that long to tell that okay story yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you have any other direct questions about this stuff? No, no, that, that was the stuff I wanted to cover, but I mean, I, you know, I wanted to reminisce a little bit too. Yeah. So uh, you, you're talking about, I want to tell you a story now about Sean and Crispin that always sticks with me, which is, um, I, what was it called? Was it the spice network? There was some network that was like, I don't know if it was hardcore or softcore, but it was porn for Not the right. most part. And I think, I don't know if it was part of their regular cable package or because they were roommates or they'd just been getting it for free uh because somehow they were getting it for free but i just seem to remember there was like a two-week period where they knew it was getting cut off and they had what they said anyways they had a bank of vcrs (laughs) running like 24 (laughs) 7 those dudes are two of the funniest people like oh my god they were absolutely (laughs) insanely hilarious together because they yeah. always just would like s- just quietly say the funniest stuff and then help build the narrative. And it would just become, yeah. oh, I, this is another thing I thought was fascinating. And I thought about a lot in the time since I've left is this idea that we had these periods in which um, like every month long magazine cycle was its own universe. Like somebody mm-hmm. might be getting bullied or shit on for that month, but it wouldn't be the same the next month. It would just change. Yep. It, like we sort of abandoned that narrative and then it was like, okay, what's the dumb thing this month? And uh, there was this whole thing where uh, <laughs> there was like one month, this is kind of awful in a way, but there's a whole month of like, um, is Todd gay? That was the, the official <laughs> PlayStation. I, I, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And then I went to San Francisco and um, I was in San Francisco and there was like, oh, this time. And it was like a whole thing. And then I started like questioning it. I was like, well, am I? I don't think I am, but maybe. I don't know. And then, uh, and then there was just this one point that something happened. It doesn't matter. Then I went back to the magazine and I was working and somebody made the joke. And I think it might have been like the first day of the new cycle. And I just stood up and I was like, I am not gay. And I was just like, I've learned, I've gone through the process, I've done the work, I've thought about it, and I'm not. And that was it. Done and I was like, okay. work. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like a funny thing of thinking about how those narratives would sort of pop up over a month. Like Turdy, that was probably like a, yeah. a month long meme. It's like we had yep. memes, we Absolutely. just didn't know it. It was, it, was a, it was a cool time. I mean, we weren't being paid enough. It sounds like um, I went to a male brothel in San Francisco and just. I mean, wild. did you? That's, I didn't. That's fine. I just you were work. doing the work. It's, I did the you know. work. <laughs> Feet of boots on the ground. It was. Nothing wrong with that. Um, no, but you're right. Like it was, it was an interesting time. I, I, I think about it like from sort of a professional standpoint as well, because you know, um, it was mostly male. Yeah. Although there were, you know, there were some some women working there. Um, like uh, Jeannie was there. Uh, Jennifer, Donna, um, are the the three in particular that jump out. Sadly, that those are the only names that really pop out because there really weren't a whole lot of women in the group. Right. But for the most part, we were all, you know, very few of us were married. Very few of us had, if any, had children. Um, and a lot of us didn't even really have significant others. Yeah. Uh, and we were all in our mid twenties, and it was just, and it was such a weird. You know, where stuff like that could happen. It's just such a weird, fun atmosphere. Yeah. Even though you were under constant pressure to deliver every month. Right. It was, it just was a lot of fun. I don't know that I, I don't know that I could go back and do it now, especially with like the current state of the video games industry. But for us being in that place at that time in that industry was amazing. It, I was, it was amazing. It's a very interesting time. It's almost like even the Oak Park. Oak Brook? Oak Brook? Oak Brook, yeah. That also had this weird sort of spell because it was just like in a suburb. <laughs> yeah. We weren't in a cool place, you know. And moving to San Francisco, which was very much the right thing to do for people, um, it just sort of like that just changed the the whole thing. When it did, changed the dynamic. Yeah. When did Expert Gamer cease? <sighs> Uh, well, I mean, it turned, it turned into game now. So after mm-hmm. you and I left was when um, Phil Theobald came on. And uh, you, I don't even remember Slim Miller. I don't remember. Slim um, Miller. And Andy and Ethan Einhorn oh, yeah. uh, Ethan. all came on at various points. When they changed the game now, Dan Leahy took over at Editor-in-Chief when John Riccardi left. Right. Um, but it, then you and I were, had moved off. Wasn't to, there a time when Craig Kajawa was the 
editor in chief of he, Expert Gamer? Or was that official? He was the right? EIC of OPM. Okay. And when tell. when we moved, he went from EIC of OPM over to EGM, and John Davison came over and took over OPM. Right, which was pretty yeah. good move for the world. Um, Craig, I just want to tell this one story about Craig that is one of my favorites. But he had his own office, and it wasn't a big office, especially now mm-hmm. thinking back. Just like a yeah. chair or two, a desk, his chair, and then his like a desk behind him for his uh, consoles or whatever. But he had a giant like nine hundred thousand inch TV behind him, and we would always go in and see him playing, and he'd just be overwhelmed by this huge TV, and we would say like, oh, "Craig's getting face cancer," and I just that's one of my favorite <laughs> memories is just the face cancer because it was just from a huge, gigantic, I mean, literally like a seventy inch TV. In like, I don't remember that, but oh, yeah, I believe you. What a dude. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'll let you get back to your life. I gotta eat breakfast, but is there anything all right. else I'm missing? You can call me anytime about this stuff, and I'll I'll bring up I'm gonna, stories about people. I'm gonna do. Uh, there's two things I want to do. So yeah. one is, um, thank you for this. First of all, I really appreciate it. Um, and and we haven't talked in so long, and like you and I, I felt like you and I had a bit of a bond there because yeah, yeah. we were sort of the new guys at the same time, and then we moved up together take over the world but um look at us now but uh and look at us now boy what a disappointment um 